Hi, Ashwin. Um, let's start with uh, a little bit about yourself for people who do not know. Uh, can you introduce yourself, uh, who you are, and what you do? Okay, so my name is Ashwan. Um, I work as a principal engineer at Netflix. Uh, I'm basically a developer, and I mean, I, I write code for work, and I have, a, I have a lot of interest in operations, like how my code actually works in production, uh, and what goes behind the scenes to make it work. Uh, so that's how I entered into this whole operation space, or DevOps, uh, or whatever. Um, that's what I do. So I, I talked about Index. So Index is a data as a service company. Uh, we crawl and collect products uh, that you find on <coughs> Snapchat, Target, Snapdeal, Target, whatever, Walmart, uh, and then we sort of normalize them, classify them, uh, and then catalog them, and then give that over an API. So that somebody who wants to work with product uh, information, yeah. Index is a data service that you can work with. So that's basically what we do in this. And where are your clients basically? So predominantly, most of our clients are from US. Okay. Uh, we do have some in India, mm -hmm. uh, but very small. We are just expanding the whole catalog in India space. Great. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about your background and how did you stumble upon your current job role at Index? Okay, so I did my beta computer science uh, from Shastra University. Um, and then I landed Index as my as graduate, just after finishing my college at Giants Index. Um, I started off as being a software engineer, worked on the, the whole big data ecosystem, working with charts, working with large amounts of data. And then as I started working with them, I realized that there are a lot of things that goes behind the scenes um, that, that we take for granted. And sometimes I get these previous errors that there is an out of memory that happened, or a GC over that happened, and you really don't know why. Uh, I mean, at, at that point in time, it was early in my career, and I was fortunate enough to have a really good team of mentors. I think it was a team of mentors because everybody, I was uh, the youngest full time employee at the case when I joined. Uh, so, everybody who I worked with was very senior. So, they sort of, I learned a lot of stuff from them. Uh, and then, when I realized that operations is something that I really found interest in, uh, Index was, um, was also helpful enough to give me an opportunity. To work on that space to contribute to the company on that domain and space, got it. Uh, and that ended up being that I am today. Got it, got it, great. Um, can you can you tell us a little bit about the challenges that come with this role? Uh, I mean, the being in okay, I'm I'm not a first class operations engineer. I don't work in operation space. But as the culture at Index is that even if you're a developer, you need to take care of your operations. The one thing uh, that you will learn is generally when I was in college, it was all about writing code. Like, sure. I'm, I'm, can I get this algorithm right? Can I get this output right? Can I make this page more prettier? You know, that's, that's basically what you work on. Yeah. It's what you focus on. And you don't really worry about how does something like Google work? Um, how does a system, company like a Twitter or Facebook work? They are also HTML and CSS for you, right. but there are a lot of systems that goes behind the scenes. Yeah. Now, if you're really passionate about learning not just what systems, but how also they operate. Now it's very easy to say use a database to solve to store your blocks. It's very easy, but how do you manage a database? I'm not saying you need to know to write a query and stuff, which is a good thing to have, that's what DBA rules are for. But what does it mean to maintain a database? What it means to have a backup in place for a database? How do you keep uh, replicas and sync? You know, things like that. What goes to make sure your production, you know, I mean, as somebody, if you're working with, say, Twitter, or, I mean, you're using Twitter or Facebook, and then you suddenly see they don't open up. The first thing he goes, is it down.com? And then check the facebook.com or twitter.com to check if it's really down or not. And there are people who work day and night and put in long hours to make sure that doesn't happen for users like us. Now, if you are interested and passionate about stuff like that, now that's how you sort of get into understanding what goes behind the scenes. And then you get into this whole operations space. Got it, got it. So, uh, Ashwin, you are also active in a lot of communities, like uh, tech communities, uh, community, we sort of Chennai, like the Docker, Chennai group, uh, and the Chennai tech community as such. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about why people should even get involved? Uh, you know, they have a job, they're doing their programming, they're coming back home and sleeping or spending their time with their family and all of that. Stuff. Despite that, some of us uh, put in and invest in a lot of time, energy, and effort to community events, to speak at events, to uh, organize events, and uh, do that. Right? Can you tell us a little bit about why that is important? 
I mean, personally for me, I participate in a lot of events. I try to either help them organize or be just a participant, just walk in and listen to what people have to say. Because to me, it gives, it opens a perspective. So, I mean, I, I work at a startup uh, and I'm exposed to a bunch of uh, a problem space. Uh, that I get to work on, and I have enough opportunities to work on them. But there are also other people in different domains who are trying to solve a very similar problem, probably in a different way, taking inspiration from somewhere else that you might not even know of or heard of. Now, going and meeting, uh, you know, it could be a small meetup, some conferences like these, it helps you share ideas, it helps you grow as a person. Uh, to me, I mean, it's, it's like a difference between you. Uh, writing examinations by like reading textbook versus you doing your research or doing a project on your company. That's to get into that zone, the next zone of doing this. If you want to do a project or a research, you need to have more additional inputs than what your textbooks are. Yeah. So that's when you come out of your circle, go meet new people, or just listen to them. You can still be passive if you are starting off. I would recommend be a passive participant. Uh, just go listen to what people have to say, and you can see when you're in a community, you get a lot of repetition. The same people turn up over and over again for different set of things, and you know you can learn from this person. And most of the times, all people are super helpful. You just have to go talk to them or ask them, you know what, how did you solve this problem? And I learned a lot from going talking to people. A lot of stuff that I do at work is not technically my own. It's just the inspiration that I got from different other people over time. So that's one of the reasons why I go uh, attend these meetups or talk at conferences. That's how I would recommend anybody to do so also. Um, can you also, uh, I know they have not ended yet, but uh, so far what has been your key takeaway at, at this conference? Uh, I mean, it's I mean, first and foremost thing is it's it's very nice to see that a big a big operational interest uh, a conference like this. I think it's the first time that's happening, uh, and there are quite a bit of crowd. Um, honestly, much larger than what I expected. So that's that's really good, which means there is a lot of scope, there are a lot of people, and I've seen a lot of people for the first time. Um, so I've met a lot of people that I can go interact with, learn from. So that's one key takeaway. Key takeaway. And then there are individual talks. Uh, each of them gave me. Uh, to me, it comes in two parts. One is some of some of it is a validation that some approaches or ideas that I follow, uh, though I might think that okay, maybe I discovered it or I follow it personally. It, it, you get validated with the idea because a lot of other organizations in your exact same city do the same thing. All of them talk about resource schedulers. That's exactly what our key learning was. All of us, all people talk about centralized DevOps is not a way to scale. That was our key learning takeaway. So. One thing is definitely the validation, and hopefully from my talk, I was also able to give some part. Uh, I mean, though I didn't have a lot of time for feedback, I'm hoping to interact with a lot of people post this uh, thing to get some feedback on what they thought about some of our evolution. Right. right. Uh, to me, that's. I mean, it hasn't. It's not official take takeaway yet, but I'm really looking forward to those discussions. So that's uh, something. I think these are three main things for me from this today. Got it. Thanks a lot, Ashwin. Thank you so much for spending time with us. Thanks, Chris.